Hey guys, what's up? I, I've got a video for you today I think you guys are going to like. And in this video I'm going to show you Xbox controller controls in our game. And as you can see, I'm playing with the controller right now. You can walk really slowly, quickly. You can turn whatever direction you want. You notice our sound effects are still working. And you can sprint, so we can walk slowly, or we can sprint. And we can also still jump. And that looks funny, I know. But Anyway, I'm going to show you how I did this. Uh, we're going to set up every single button on this controller, except the Xbox Home button, which on Windows 10 is supposed to open. Yeah, see that game bar? Sure, yes, this is a game. And you can record and do all that stuff, but, you know, I won't be using this. I don't even know how to get it to go away. Um, let's see. Nope, didn't pop up down there. Oh, maybe you just press it again. Alright, so that button's off limits, obviously. The one that usually turns on your console. But, um, to set up the controller, first thing you need to do is go into Edit, Project Settings, Input, and uh, by default, I think you already have 18 of these default, um, you know, inputs. I think the only two that are useful are mouse X and mouse Y. Those are the only two I've used. I might actually use this one now that I know it exists. But, this is where I started, Xbox A. And I ended with Xbox DPV, and if you're wondering what DPV is, that's the D-pad or the the like bottom left part of the controller that has basically like it's kind of like little arrows. It looks like a plus. Anyway, the reason I did them in this order is because that's the order. Um, that the input numbers go. So, you've got two types of inputs with a controller, with an Xbox controller. You've either got an axis or you've got a button. So, this one would be an axis. Well, actually, no, this is a button. Um, but you still have to put third axis for whatever reason. I believe anyway, but um, for type you have to leave it as key or mouse button. So for the A button, which is our first button, you have to type in, you have to give it a name, you don't have to give it a description. These are the two things that are very important here when it comes to buttons, or three things here. I think you have to do the third axis thing, but I'm not sure. But it has to say key or mouse button. You have to give it a name, and you need to remember this name if you ever want to use this input. And for positive button, you have to type in joystick button and give the number that's associated with it. So A would be 0. B e set up the same way. You name it. Joystick button 1. And key or mouse button. And third axis. For X, it's joystick button 2. For Y, it's joystick button 3. Our left button, which is above the left trigger, it's that one that your index finger goes on. That's joystick button 4. And then the one opposite to that, the one that your right index finger goes on, is joystick button 5. And then the left menu button. So where that um, that button to turn on your Xbox or whatever goes, it's the one to the left of that. The one that has like the little two windows on it. I just called that the left menu button, and it's called by LMB. And my uh, input anyway. Again, you can name these whatever you want. You just gotta remember the names. That's joystick button six. And then right menu button, which is usually the considered the start button, 
is joystick button 7 and then LJP for left joystick press that would be joystick button 8 so not only can you move up and down with that joystick you can press it down and do things then you got right joystick press and that's joystick button 9 and that's all your buttons now everything else is an axis so your triggers are considered an axis and I'm assuming when you press the left trigger it's a negative value that comes out between 0 and 1 if I had to guess I don't actually know because I've never looked but it would make sense if it was 1 and then you've got your two joysticks and the d-pad is also considered an axis so you only have to set up each direction once and with these you don't give a button name so let's look at the left joystick horizontal so this would be left and right on the left joystick you need to give these a dead zone or else your game is going to go crazy I just set gravity and sensitivity to one so gravity you can uh, you can read that speed in units a second that the output value falls towards neutral when the device is at rest. So if you have that set to a thousand, it's going to take a thousand seconds to get back from one to zero, which is ridiculous. You obviously don't want that. One seems to work fine. Sensitivity, speed to move towards target value for digital devices. So if you pushed, let's say, Let's say you move the joystick all the way to the right. How fast will that climb to, I think it actually climbs to negative one if you go to the right. No, actually I think that, that's different. I don't know. When you push to the right though, that um, I'm assuming it just moves over a thousand times faster. Uh, <laughs> thousand units per second if it's only one unit in total that'd be pretty much instantly and then you got snap so that doesn't really work with your joysticks because if you move all the way to the right and then all the way to the left there's no point where they kind of like intersected with your third axis triggers or that's um that's the little triggers that your either middle finger or index finger depending on how you like to hold the controller uh, push in snap would be useful there if you'd like to so if you're putting in inputs from both it just um it'll change it to neutral so zero and then you've got invert so if it's giving you a negative value when you don't want it to then you can invert it and it'll give you a positive value However, I just like the leave it be. But the difference with these and the buttons is you have to change this to a joystick axis. And the left joystick horizontal would be the X axis. So the like I said, the top left uh, joystick. The one you can move freely in any direction. And then to move vertically, you change it to the Y axis and it also has to be a joystick axis again none of these axis um, inputs are gonna have a positive or any sort of button and you have to change the dead zone to something 0 0.05 is pretty good because it won't randomly move and with the littlest input of the joystick it still still works Um, with the right joystick, the axis for the horizontal movement, or left and right, is the fifth axis. The vertical movement would be the fourth axis. I think T would be the triggers, yeah. So this one's the third axis, and it's still joystick axis. And then the D-pad, I believe, is the 6th and 7th. So 6th to move horizontally, 
So if you push the right button, I believe it, I believe it just goes to positive one. Or if you push the left button, it would go to negative one. And same thing with the vertical, and that would be the seventh axis. And this is a drop-down menu, so it's not like you can get it wrong. As long as you set the joystick axis and you change these values to something that's not weird. But that's that's the setup for every single button on the controller. And to implement these, for any button, you put, let's say you put in an if statement, you put if input dot get button, or get button down, or any of those. For the axis, you put input dot get axis, and then the name, and anytime you use one of these, you have to put it in quotes. So I'll show you. We probably built this movement script together. And since we used else ifs, if any of these are being pressed, it will not run this. And I said if it's not equal to zero. So if it's not equal to zero, it won't try to do anything. But here I also put the left button, which I said is the one your index finger goes on, on your left hand. So if you press that button and move the joystick forward, you will move at two and a half times your normal speed. Of course, that could be kind of weird if you, if you only give the joystick like maybe 10% of a forward push, then it's still moving like extra fast. I don't know. And then this is also in an else if. And that's the normal movement speed. Oh, I, for this one I put um, if it's less than zero because it was giving me a negative value when I push it forward. So if if that if you're interested in oh my gosh I can't speak if you're interested in inverting that one that would make sense because then it would be greater than zero and you wouldn't have this extra uh, thing to put in here. And you wouldn't have to make it negative. So that makes it kind of strange. And then with these, I made sure you were not pushing computer keys before you did this. Uh, I'm trying to think of why. You're pushing forward and moving left with this. I don't know can't move in left and right because if you're pushing one of these keys it'll never get to this if statement I think that was just to separate Xbox controls and um, and uh, regular PC controls which means I should probably also put and not input dot get key a and not input get key D so if I get either of those two keys I can't move forward either and then put that down here as well all right so now let me show you As long as it works right. All right, I'm gonna push W, and I'm also gonna move the joystick. Nothing happens. I can't move left and right. I'm spinning the left joystick in circles, and as you can see on the left side of the scene, it's not really doing anything. However, I can still rotate because those are separate. Now, if I try to rotate with my mouse, it's still gonna work somewhat. Like if, as long as your mouse is moving, it can't do anything. But if it if you stop moving for even the slightest second, one frame, if the value doesn't change from the mouse, then the controller takes over. So there's not much you can do about that. But you know, I can play around with this controller, the left joystick all at once. He moves forward, and 
if I'm already using the controller, the computer takes over. So that is very important, and I just change scenes. But yeah, that's, that's this whole tutorial. I think. I need to show you how to use the key. Okay, so here's my example. Where we can jump. We wrote this jump script. Um, if input dot get button down, so if you press A down at that specific moment, this will run true. And we named it Xbox A. And like these, if input dot get button down, Xbox LB. As you can see, that was working. And with these input dot get access. Uh, they'll never run true or false, so you have to put less than or equal or whatever to zero if you want to put in an if statement. But as you can see, Xbox LJV, left joystick vertical, and if we go in here, backdoor inputs, you'll see left joystick ver vertical, and you can adjust these in any way you want. But yeah, that's all there is to it. Uh, see you guys in the next tutorial.